Hey guys, I'm Jonathan. Welcome to this new video. We will learn how to do this. Just before starting the video, I wanted to tell you that you can download the source file. The link is in the description. If you discover this channel, I currently publish 2-3 to three videos per week related to filming, advertising video, and 3D. With Cinema for D, Blender and Houdini. So, if you are interested with these subjects, don't hesitate to subscribe. I thank in advance all the people who like, comment and share my videos. You know it helped me a lot. If you want to have help, you can join the Discord server and the Facebook group. The links are in description. We don't waste any more time. If you are ready, let's go. Here, I opened my final file for you. On the white node, here is the node that I used to do the clothing simulation. So if I open it, we suddenly have all the nodes that are used for geometry. You will see, it is really quite simple to set up. Then here, all the nodes in blue. These are the render nodes. So there, I have my simulation set up at this level, my camera, and a node for the background. So here is the white background that we can see at the viewport level. Here I have my two red nodes, so the materials node and the render node. And then I have my three lights here in orange. So there, I'm going to directly resume this setup from scratch. So there I'm going to press tab, and I'm going to type geometry to be able to add a new geometry node. Then I'm going to disable all of that, for now, and also disable my lights and I'm going to double click here, and we'll be able to start this setup from scratch. So here I'm going to start with a circle. So I'm going to hit table and circle. I'm going to get out of my camera view here, and I'm going to put myself roughly like this. So there, I'm going to leave the circle as a polygon. And here, at the level of the subdivisions, by default it's 12. So I'm going to increase them. I'm going to put 50. Next, I'm going to put the node remesh, so I can have triangles, here, at my subdivisions, so it works better for clothing simulations. And so there, we can see that we have a fairly low resolution. So instead of 0.2, I'm going to put 0.05. That way, we have a little more subdivisions at the level of the triangles. So then, this circle, I would like to duplicate it, so that I can then apply the clothing simulation on different circles. So there, I could use the copy node, and define a desired number of copies but then I will need to add a parameter to be able to add a gradient effect on our colors at the rendering level. For this, you will see, we will add a few more small parameters. So there, already, the first step is to add a node copy to point, and we will copy this geometry to the points of a line. So there, I'm going to look for a line just at that level. So I'm also going to press Shift S to have the small wires rounded here. I think it's a little better. And so there, at the level of the parameters of my line, I will come to visualize it. So there, we can see that it points upwards. So we don't want that. So I'm going to change the direction. Instead of 1 on the y-axis, I'm going to put 0, and I'm going to put 1 right here. So then, the length, we can come and change it here, and the number of points at this level. So there, we are already going to change the origin of my geometry, to put it in the center. So there, I'm going to come and take the value of the line here. I'm going to right-click, and copy parameter, and I'm going to put here, paste relative referent, so that means that this distance, here, will correspond to the value there is at this level. So then, I'm going to divide this value by 2. And there, just add a minus in front, to be able to put my line in the center. So there, every time I want to change the length of my line, it won't change, it will always be in the center. And we like that, we have something 100% procedural. So there, at the level of the length of my line, I'm going to put 0.5. There we can display the points at this level. So there for the moment. We only have two points, and I'm going to put some 12, like that. We will have 12 copies of the circle, here after the node copy to point. So there, I'm going to visualize this node, and we can see that we have, suddenly, 12 copies of our base circle. So here, as I told you earlier, we want to add a parameter to add a gradient to the final rendering. So here we are going to add a little color viewer. So there, after the copy to point, I'm going to add a node color. And so there, the viewer, if I come to change its color. So there, by default, it's white. I put a red like this, we can see that all the circles are in red. We applied the color after the copy to point, so on our copies of circles, so here, all our circles are red. To be able to add a gradient, you will have to create a new attribute. So for that, we will add the point VOP. You can also do it in VEX, but there it will be easier to do it with VOP. So there, we are going to take the line, we are going to put it on the first entry here, and we are going to put it here on the copy to point. So there, we are going to go inside this VOP point. Here, once we are inside the VOP point, we will retrieve our ptNum attribute, so the point numbers. So here, if we look in the geometry spreadsheet, and we just go to that level, we can see that we already have 12 points, so from 0 to 11. Because you start counting from 1, but a computer starts counting from 0, 
so we do have our 12 points. So here, I'm going to take the PT num, and I'm going to add a bind export to be able to add an attribute that is not available here. So this one, I'm going to call it ID cloth. So there, I'm going to come and copy this attribute. So I do control C. I go back here to my geometry panel. I'm going to come to my color. And there, we can see that color type. We can choose between constant and D other options. So there, we will put for example, random from attribute. So it will put random colors from an attribute. And so there, we are going to paste the attribute that we created with the VOP point. And so there, we can see that we have random colors in our clothes. So we wanted to add a ramp. So here I'm going to put ramp from attribute, and it's exactly the same. So there, the attribute is already set, because we had pasted it on the previous option. And so there, we have to change the parameter. It's not from 0 to 1, but from 0 to 11. And so there, we have a gradient that has been created at the level of our clothes, which we can come then adjust with the settings. So we will then use this attribute to do the shading at the redshift level. So on the other hand, here, if we look at the node color level, we have put a value between 0 and 11. So which corresponds to our 12 points at the line level here. On the other hand, at the redshift level, we will have to a value between 0 and 1. So here, after the copy to point, we are going to convert this value. So we are going to add a VOP point. I'm going to come and visualize the VOP point. I'm going to go inside. So there. We won't need it, and that either. We are going to take the bind, which allows us to import an attribute. So here we are going to import the attribute that we created just before. So here the ID cloth. Then I'll put that in a fit range. Here, in source min, we have 0. And in source max, we have 11, because we have our 12 points. And here I'm going to put that in a bind export. And so there, we are going to create a new attribute, this time, which will be included in a value between 0 and 1. So here, destination min 0 destination max, 1. And so there, at the bind export level, we will put ID color. And so there, I'm going to come and copy this attribute. I'm going to go back here to my geometry panel. I'm going to put a new node color here, to see if it works well. I'm going to visualize it here, and I'm going to put ramp from attribute. I'm going to put the attribute ID color. And so there, we can see that we have exactly the same result between the two. So then, we could also come and change the size of our circles. So there, I'm going to visualize the copy to point. So here we have circles that are exactly the same size. To come and change that, we're going to go to the first point VOP here. We're going to get our point numbers. We're going to put that in a fit range. So there, source min, 0, source max, 11. So it's our 12 points, like earlier. We're going to put that in a ramp parameter. Then here, at the level of the curve, we are going to change from RGB to spline ramp, and we are going to put that in a bind export. And this time, we will put p-scale to be able to change the size of our circles. So there, at the fit level, I'm also going to leave a value between 0 and 1 at the output. I'm going back to the geometry level here. I'm going to the VOP point level. I'm going down a bit. There I'm going to unfold my curve. And there. I will be able to increase the value, for example, of the first point right here. We can see that we already have an expansion that is being done. We will also be able to increase the value at this level, and we will be able to add a point in the middle, just here. Quite simply to be able to add a variation in size here, at the level of our circles. So there, then, this value, I will select it. I'm going to go into interpolation, and put B spline, and I'm going to do the same here. B spline, and the same at the end, B spline. And so there you come to adjust the size. So I think I'm going to stay pretty much like this. So there, it seems to me not bad in terms of variation. It is not necessarily mandatory. But after that, it depends on the pattern you want to try to obtain with the clothing simulation. So these are parameters on which you have to come and play to have slightly different shapes. So then, once we've done that, we can come and add our clothing simulation. So there, I'm going to take my point VOP, and I'm going to put the vellum constraint. In the type, I will put cloth, for clothing, then at the level of the mass. I will put on uniform and thickness on calculate uniform. Then I can come and pick up my vellum solver. So at the vellum solver level, I'm going to go to the force level and I'm going to remove gravity because otherwise, if I press play, all my circles will fall. Then the wind drag here, I'm going to set it to zero 
and there, I'm going to have to add some force. So I'm going to double click here at the solver level, and simply add the pop force, and we'll link it here in our output force. Then, at the pop force level, I will put the amplitude at 0.5, and I will put the swirl size here, at 2. Then, I can go back here at the level of my geometries. I will put the vellum EO, to be able to cache. So here we are not going to do it, but you can cache your simulation, and then we are going to put the vellum post process. And so there, as its name suggests, it will allow operations to be carried out after the simulation. So there, I'm going to click on the tab of my simulation, at this level, on the green node, and I'm going to press play. And we can see that we already have a clothing simulation which is quite nice. So there, the idea is to find a pattern that you like. So you have to play with the different parameters here, at the solver level, at the force level, and you can add different forces here, and play at the noise level here, for example at the pop force level. So here is me on my main simulation. I had left the parameters like that. So then at the level of the post process vellum, here we can add subdivisions. So I will put in loop and we can add for example subdivisions at two. So there, I will visualize this node. There, it's too subdivided. I'm going to put one, otherwise it's going to be too slow. And then I'm going to go to thicken level here and I'm going to activate this option to be able to add thickness to our clothes quite simply. And so there, we can perhaps reduce a little bit, and put it at 0.8, to be able to have clothes that are a little thinner. So next, I'm going to come and take the node time shift, because I had rendered on a single image. Afterwards, you can very well render an animation. So here, at the time shift level, I will put, for example, delete channel, and I will put in the image, 60 for example. We can see here that it is calculating the simulation up to frame 60. So it may be a bit too much. I will leave frame 48, for example. And so there, we have our simulation which is curly at frame 48 all along our timeline. So like that, we can render a single frame. And then, once we have done that, we can put the normal node here. And we can put the null node, to be able to signify that it is the output of our simulation which is at this level. So there, we can put out cloth, we can come to view it, and we can come to copy it. So I select it. I do control C, I go back here to the level of my objects, and so there, I can put a new node geometry, which I'm going to call rendering. This one, I can come and hide it with the blue tab, here. I go inside the node render, and I'm going to take my node object merge, and here, at object 1, I'm going to do control V, and it's going to copy the null that we had selected. So here, I have my render node at this level and I can press C to put it in blue. So there you have it. Then you just have to find a place in your simulation that you think is pretty cool to highlight. So either you've done a simulation or you're rendering a single frame. So you find a place that's pretty good, like here, whatever, and you go to your camera, you control click, and there, your camera will move to the view where you are positioned. Then you can very well change the view with your camera. There is no problem. And then you can come and create your materials here in the material network, and then, you will have to come and link the materials with the render node. So right there, you select it, you go to render, and here you come and get the material that you created. So here, I'm not going to recreate the material from zero. I'm just going to show you what I had done for my main animation. So I'll go to the matinee. Here I have a material for the clothing simulation and a material here for the background. Here I will go into the material of clothing. The background material, there is absolutely nothing. It's just a slightly off-white, slightly gray background. Then here, at the level of the main material, I had simply set the diffuse to zero, the reflection like this, and the refraction. That was the most important parameter. I had set it to one, and here, at the level of the color of refraction, I had put my ramp. So here, I came to add the attribute that we had created, if you remember, at the beginning of the simulation. Then I put that in a ramp, so from really very light purple to light blue and I put that in refraction color. Then, I added the RSOSL node to have slightly purple reflections with the iridescence preset. I had put the node color correction to be able to do saturation and hue corrections. And I had put the node Fresnel here in the thickness. And I had connected all that on. This time, this is my reflection color. And then I added a little bit of bump around the edges of the clothes. So there you have it. 
That was it for the material of the clothing simulation. And for the background, it was an ultra-simple material, just light gray. As I told you, and there, I had added three lights, so there, I can make them visible at that level. I'm going to hide the simulation we just made, and I'm going to put back the main simulation that I created. So here I had my camera pointing that way. I had a main light that was here. I had a secondary light at that level, in a square, a little bit in backlight, and I had a light that pointed to the background, quite simply to be able to create a small gradient of lights at the level of the background plan. So that's it, it's really a setup that's super simple, and you can get some pretty cool shapes. You can play with the different strengths and different shapes you want. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe and share to support my work. I see you next time, bye.